let's resume. I'm always so scared that I'm going to forget. Um, and let's go ahead and we're just, I mean, you all look like seasoned pros over here, but let's just talk a little bit about your, um, your Zoom etiquette. I'm going to mute myself right here. So uh, let me let Miss Rita in. I'm going to have it on this view. So I can see as many of you as possible. Um, there's going to be two screens of me. This screen is the screen if you ever spotlight. You don't want to do this one because who cares what I'm doing right here. This is the screen and I'm going to spotlight it and I think I already did. So what that does is it's going to keep that screen big even if somebody else is talking. If you have a question, you can unmute your mute and unmute is usually here in the bottom left of your screen. If you're an iPad, I, I you might have to swipe or do something like that. The other thing you can do is hold down. You can hold down your space bar to speak and then let go and it should mute you again. And um, if I, I will periodically ask you for a thumbs up um, and you can just literally just give me thumbs up just to make sure everyone's all together and that nobody's getting left behind. If you don't have your screen on like Rolo and uh, Don, you can give me a reaction and your reactions are right here. So if you look right here and I push this, so you could give me a cry face, which a crying face, which, and I got a thumbs up right here for Miss Rolo, um, a heart, if you want to party. Oh, look, I didn't know that. You have all of them. You could give me the little stink eye right here if you wanted, but whatever you want, your reactions are there. There's also a chat window. Thanks for the clapping hands, Don. And Miss Rita, thank you too. Um, there's a chat window too. Um, I usually, because I'm so busy and focused on what we're doing, I don't always check the chat window. So my preference would be that you just... Um, that you unmute and ask your question and then remute again. And uh, don't have your, I hope your feelings won't be hurt. If you forget to mute, I will mute you on my end because I can do that. So this is what I'm going to leave right here. Let's talk about clear blue tiles. Oh, of course, I didn't even bring my stuff. I uh, I have the instructions printed out. So this should have been, the design is on your clear blue tiles. Hang on, I'm gonna move my computer so I can see your gorgeous faces. Okay, so um, the design is part of the clear blue tile. It's included in there. And so what I did was I, look at every, my things all falling apart. They always do, cause I'm so wrecked with them. But um, this is the project and it's only, I mean, each one of these, when we cut it down, it's gonna be pretty tiny. It's like this big, it's gonna be, um, I think four and a half inches. And these are gonna be what, two and a half by like four and a half, something like that. So um, when we finish the, the table runner, it's only gonna be probably, I forget what the measurement was, but it was something like 28 inches by 18 inches or something like that, um, or 14 inches. So I cut out two, I doubled it. So if you look at your table runner, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five houses and four trees. So I cut enough to do 10 houses and eight trees because I have a really big table. And I just thought this was gonna be so cute. And I wanna put it in the, I'm like the worst decorator. I, my house is, I go to other people's houses and it always looks so beautiful. My house is the worst. So I'm determined to try and make it look nicer. And I thought this would be so cute. And I I, um, I cut from a fat quarter pack by uh, Moda called Bell Isle. And um, that's what I'm gonna be using. So what I want us to start with, and I, you know, the very first one that I did, I shouldn't even admit this, but the very first house I did, cause you're going to have, Oh, I almost had a panic attack. You're gonna have, um, for me, I'm doing, this is grunge and it's paper. You're gonna have bigger pieces that are two and a half by four and a half. And then you're gonna have smaller pieces that are gonna be two by three. So when I did my first one, I just looked at this and I was like, oh, it's a two by three. And I put it down and it didn't reach. And I literally thought Kimberbell had made a mistake because it couldn't be me. And, and I was like, it's piece number eight and nine. And I kept looking here and going, oh, there's eight and nine. See, it does say two by three. 
What I didn't notice is that it said eight and nine house background, two and a half by four and a half. And, um, and then I realized it's me. It's always me. If there's a mistake, it's Jeannie. It's not Kimber Bell. Um, so I, I got it right the next time around. So what I do is I often use, instead of um, no-show mesh, I just don't like how stiff no-show mesh is. So sorry about that. Um, I like to use muslin. And so in the store, we carry 45 inch, 60 inch and 90 inch. And I almost, and it doesn't matter to me. I almost always grab the 60 inch and the 90 inch. And I just cut a strip of, and you know, spring showers. I always use the muslin I'll be using it for the bench pillow. Um, I just cut a strip that was nine inches wide with the fabric and I leave it on here and I just move it up and I rehoop. So, um, before we do that, let's go ahead and pick out our fabric and it's going to help you. I had all of my stuff groups. So I had all of my, this color all together and then all this color all together. So I want you to put your house together first. So you know what colors you're going to be grabbing and using. And so for instance, I have mine grouped here with this. I'm going to do this house. And so what you're going to grab is you're going to grab the three by three, that's gonna be the door. So grab that. You're gonna get, and I know some of these aren't three by three. I just, they were the end and I just cut them. So you're gonna grab a three by three. That's going to be the um, side of the house. So three by three, three by three. And then you're gonna have a piece. And when you look at these pieces, you're gonna have a piece that's a little bit skinnier. And I call that hot dog. Grab your hot dog piece, not your hamburger bun piece. That first piece is going to go above. So it's this part of the house right here. So you have the sides of your house, the door, the sides of your house. Then you're gonna have this piece, the top of the house, and then you have your roof, okay? So just have that set and laid out so you know which piece you're gonna be grabbing. And then you're gonna need two of the two and a half. See, this is just my scrap. And then you're gonna need the two and a half that's gonna go up there. And that is going to be what's gonna make our house. So Miss Audrey, I think is I think Audrey's the only one stitching with me. Ellie, are you stitching? You look like you are stitching. You're gonna, you look like you're putting your pieces together. Okay. And I'm not Rita, are you stitching with us today? Because I know a lot of people are watching. So I am not me. stitching because I am working. You're working. Okay. I hope you get a lot of work done. We'll be on the DL. Nobody needs to know. All right. So that's what we're going to put down. I'm really not going to be referring to my instructions that much. Can you watch for Joyce? She couldn't get in. Oh, just wait. I just got Joanne and uh, I will watch for Joyce. Okay. Yes. Um, it gives you a template. So that's the most important part, I think, is just the template so you know what piece to lay down when. We're gonna start with the door, then the side of the house, the other side, the top of the house, your white piece, your white piece, the roof, your white piece, your white piece. So it's numbered and it's gonna tell you exactly how to stitch it. So um, I do a lot, I've done a lot of piecing in the hoop in, with Kimber Bell Club. They always have a project or two each year. And um, I find that, a quarter of the people find this super, super confusing. So if you're one of those people, um, then maybe what you do is you do a step and check it off and do a step and check it off. Um, but we'll go slowly and we'll stay all together. Um, and once you get the concept down, it should make sense and be easier. But if you find it confusing, other people do too. So don't feel bad, but we'll we'll go ahead and we'll do everything all together. So, um, and I'm just gonna kind of stack these up in the the order in which, and if you need to do this too, stack them up in the order in which we're going to stitch them down. This is going to be my first piece. I'm going to put it face down. This is my second piece. And I'm just looking over here and grabbing my pieces, my third piece, my fourth piece, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So now I can grab everything, it's all set and it's ready to go and there shouldn't be any confusion. So I want everyone to just go ahead and grab your pieces. Hi, Michelle. we just literally picked our pieces. 
um, for our house. Like this one, for instance. So last night when I was doing all this, I just laid everything out and I just picked. So this one I can tell, I think I was doing, um, this is the door. Here were my sides. Here's my top. And then I had the sides of my house, the roof of my house, and then the two other pieces. So while it's stitching or while you're just sitting there, you can put together your houses so they're set and ready to go. And then if you want, then you can go ahead and stack these in order. So I know this one is ready. This one's going to be number one, number two, and I'm just pulling pieces from here as I go. This piece is number three. Let me get rid of this phone. I'm gonna put this in the other room, like a grenade. What were we on? Whoops. So that was three. This is four, five, six, seven eight, nine. So if we have a chance, we'll do two of these. Um, I wanna do two of the trees. So this is the one I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put this one to the side. That was me going, oh, I'm gonna get so much done. And then I always get so little done. Okay, um, let's go ahead and hoop up. I'm gonna put these over here. This, I loaded these into the hoop last night and I, I gotta say, I would call it a mistake. Not that, I mean, they both came out great and they were fine, but I put them way too close together. So my advice to you is to, if you're gonna do two at a time, spread them out because I had to kind of fold this back and stitch this and then fold this back and stitch this. So we will do two trees at a time. We're, we're gonna do one at the top of the hoop and one at the bottom of the hoop. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna unhoop this. I'm just gonna scoot this up. This is how you maximize the use of either your stabilizer or your muslin. And I'm just gonna be using a pair of snips to trim this stuff. I'm gonna trim this away. We're really gonna trim almost directly on this line. I don't recommend you really trim directly on that line. You're gonna do use that as kind of your guide. And we'll, we'll do one later, but like for instance, cause there could be some pulling inward or outward, or maybe it doesn't lay totally flat. So use this kind of as a guide, but you're gonna like this, for instance, it's gonna get trimmed to two and a half by four and a half. So we'll do that in a little bit. All right, focus, Jeannie, focus. I have to remind myself, so I'm not jumping all over the place. And I'm gonna just put this over here, have a little bit of that sticking out, just a little. And push, there we go. And then grab your fabric and gently just pull inward so it's laying nice and flat, but you don't wanna distort your weave, so don't go crazy. Don't like strong arm it and pull it all the way in. We don't have to do that. And pull this up a little bit. You just want it to be nice and flat. I'm just using white thread in my bobbin. It's already in. Let's go take this to the machine. Here we go. We got a new filming arm because our last one was super, I guess it was like swaying a lot. So I just got a new one. So hopefully this will be better. And I'm going to go in here. I'm loading my machine, my, um, my hoop onto my machine. First thing I always do is I always choose my hoop size. So if you're on a baby lock or a brother, you can go to your settings button. It's either gonna be up here or it could be down here. I'm gonna hit that. And let me move my computer so I can see you again. Hang on just a second. And mine is on, Right now I'm set to the 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. And I want my five by seven. So just go ahead and hit your five by seven hoop. You might have to arrow over to it. I, I like pedal to the metal. I'm going as fast as I can go. Um, and everything else looks good. If you have a Solaris and a Luminaire with the upgrade, make sure you have this on because that means you do not have to put the foot down and hit start. You just hit start. It's gonna do it for you automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to that. 
Did I put my stick in? Let's load our design. And if you have any questions, stop me, ladies. Um, embroidery on my stick. And there's my house right here. I already preloaded it. So here, I'll make it bigger if you want to see it bigger. You know, on your Luminaire and Solaris, you can push and pull to see your icons bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and touch that. And I already have something. It looks like we scanned something. I'm going to get rid of that scan. You just hit your um, camera button and hit off. And there's the scan is gone. All right. Um, I'm going to close that. And we are ready to go. I'm just going to hit embroidery. I have all this excess. So I'm going to take my design and slide it all the way up to the top. I don't use my finger because I don't want it to go left to right. I'm going to hit layout, move and scoot it all the way up. If you have your hoop on your um, your hoop on your machine, it won't let you go outside of your embroidery area. So I'm just gonna go all the way up and you'll hear it kind of do a knock knock. That's how I know we're up as far as we can go. And I'm just using this color. You're not gonna see any of this thread until we do the final stitch out. Um, that's gonna go around the entire block, but I'm just going to do a color. I usually use when I'm piecing the hoop, I'll usually use like a lighter color. Let me put this on and thread her up. All right, ladies, stitch out your template. This is going to show you where to lay down your fabric. Gonna get my fabric right here. It's gonna be ready to go. It's already in order. I'm gonna be using best um, spray adhesive. So I'm a KK Ganold kind of girl. What am I hitting? This is like this. This has to probably be in my top three things of of embroidery tools or supplies that I use. So Jeannie, that doesn't gum the needle or anything? Um, I wouldn't totally say that. Um, I think what I have in here, I don't even know what I have in here. What is this? Well, he feels skinny. I just kind of hopped on the machine. Um, it's the purple and green. Is this like a 7511? Um, I do find sometimes I might get a little shred because if you think about adhesive and the needle going through the adhesive and the thread going through the adhesive, uh, but I don't use a lot of spray. Like I'll show you how I spray because I am going to do something I usually say don't do. I, I spray in the hoop, but I am really, really conservative with the amount of spray. We're not gonna, it's not like 80s Aquanet that we're spraying our hair. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna give, I have a spray box over here. This is my first piece. This is going to be the door and I'm just gonna give it a little shot of spray. Hi, whoops, just a little bit. I don't have that many issues and I use this spray all the time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it down and you wanna just kind of center this over the door. This is the only piece that we're gonna be spraying in our spray box and putting down and you only spray on the wrong side of your fabric. So go ahead and cover over that door. Next thing that's gonna happen, We'll look at our instructions and follow them for a little bit. Um, we just laid down our piece. We're going to uh, sew, this is your trim line. So go ahead and hit start. That's the line that we're gonna trim. So get your snips. I have like a huge list of stuff. Um, like, like where I sit, there's a pen. Okay, trim. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim to the left because our next piece is going down and it's to the left of the door. So just go ahead and trim. I always tell people, pretend this is a line that goes all the way top to bottom and your stitch kind of be in the middle. As long as this doesn't extend past, you're good. And this doesn't have to be perfect trimming. So don't worry about that. We're gonna put down one of our 
this piece number two. And if it helps you, you could write in the numbers too. Then I'll tell you which piece you're going to write, write, uh, lay down next, or just keep your template next to you so you know what's going to go down. You want to put this down and center it to your stitch. Don't center it to your fabric, center it to the stitch that just happened. You're going to lay your fabric directly on that placement line. It's a trim line. It's also a placement line. And now your machine's going to sew your quarter inch seam. So it's going to sew a quarter inch from that placement stitch. So we did this, we trimmed it, we laid our fabric down, it sewed our quarter inch, and now we're gonna fold this over. You have a couple different options for what you can do. Number one, you can use a mini iron. I'm not gonna be doing that. If you're gonna do that, which is totally fine, it's gonna take a lot longer. Um, so you could use a mini iron. If you're gonna use a mini iron, you need to remove your hoop from the machine and put it on your ironing board. You're not going to do not iron here. Um, the other thing you could do is you could just finger press. I spray because it just stays down and it looks better and it's cleaner. What I don't like is I don't like it where this where it's floppy or messy at my um, at my seam. So what I do is I just bring it towards me. I'm gonna grab my spray. This is the only time I spray in the hoop. And if you are not comfortable spraying in the hoop, use you could tape, you can fold it over, finger press, and give it a little bit of tape to kind of hold it over there. I'm a really, I gotta tell you, if I had a superpower, number one, my first superpower would be losing stuff. My second power would be spraying. I'm an excellent sprayer, not to brag or anything, but I'm pretty good. So I usually will kind of cut my hand right here and I'm just gonna give it a little shot of spray. Let's, this is a brand new can, so I haven't worked it in. I don't know if you can hear that, but I, I'm barely spraying at all. And now I'm just gonna take it. You don't want to, I mean, if you look at my hoops, I don't have spray on my hoops. I'm I, I'm a pretty precise sprayer and I'm just gonna fold it over, give it a little finger press, and then we're on to the next piece. Okay. Next piece, it's gonna stitch here on the right side and we're gonna trim. So first thing it's gonna do, trim line. If you spray though and you find you're getting it all over everything. Take it off the machine. You can take it off the machine, uh, you know, take your hoop off. You can iron, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna be spraying. We're gonna trim this. Pretend that line extends all the way. Next step, that's your trim line and your placement line. We're gonna take our piece of fabric and we're going to place it center it to the stitch. My stitch is right here, so I'm gonna center it to this piece. Now it's gonna do your quarter inch seam allowance. Yeah. I mean, the actual stitch time for this is three minutes. Takes a lot longer because we're gonna be trimming, cutting, spraying, folding, just gonna give it a little shot of spray. And I'm not spraying the whole thing. I'm just kind of spraying right there where it's gonna fold over. Slide it back. Next stitch line. And you can always look at your screen. So if you're not sure what's happening next, there it's showing you on your screen. You can see where the cursor is, where the little green hash mark is. This is gonna sew across the top. Our fabric's already in order. This is what's going down next. This is gonna be the top of the house. It should be the same fabric that you have on the sides. Trim all the way across. Pretend this line extends all the way left and all the way right. And uh, does not have to be perfect. I know my pieces are oversized. These were just like kind of leftovers from when I was cutting. And uh, you know, the other thing you can do is use a 7511 anti-glue needle. Anything that's nonstick, that's gonna help too. There's your, your stitch line. 
center your fabric to that stitch line and place it on that line, quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna kind of stretch it out a little bit. Jeannie, how often do you change your needle? Do you have a set time? <laughs> okay, um, you're or supposed to change breaks. your needle every eight hours. Mm -hmm. I, I can't keep track of that. How am I supposed to keep track of that? Especially because I switched back and forth between needles in my project. Right. I am a, when it, if it breaks, if it, um, if I'm having shredding, if I, I, I'm, I hate to say this, I'm totally reactive. So if I have a, whoops, that was a lot of spray right there. There we go. Um, so if I have a situation, that's when I'm going to change my needle. But the rule of thumb is every eight hours. Yeah. Who does, who does every eight hours? Give me a uh, thumbs up if you do every eight hours. I'm not getting a single person with a thumbs. Uh, was that you, Terry? Did you give me a thumbs up? No, I don't. I don't change it every eight hours. I'm like you. I, I have a hard time keeping track of eight hours. I have a very small brain. So my small brain can't remember all of that. You guys know me. Oh, geez. Um, okay, ready? We're going to stitch here and we're going to put one of our white pieces down. Just go ahead and do your stitch. But see how nice and flat everything lays. My seams are all going to be nice and flat. So I am a sprayer. Go ahead and trim to the left of that line. That is your trim line and your placement line. And just pretend it extends all the way. What you don't want to do is under sew, like to or undercut and totally cut into it here because you might see some stuff. So just nice and straight. Doesn't have to be perfect. Center to your stitch. Make sure all of this fabric that I'm using today, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's the right side or the wrong side with this with this grunge. Okay. There we go. That's the right side. Um, all of all of the white that I'm using, it was all left over from um, I used it for Serenity Prayer, and it was all the side pieces that were left over. I was like, oh, I only need skinny little pieces. And they were all like two and a half, three and a half. Okay, quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray and then I'm gonna fold it over. And I'll protect with my hand because sometimes I, whoops, sometimes I go a little rogue. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay, next stitch, right side. We're gonna put the next piece of white fabric down. That's your trim line. Now you're gonna trim. Then we're gonna place. And pull it back a little. I usually don't even remove it from the machine. I just pull it towards me a little bit. I was watching a sew along on your spring showers. You must be ambidextrous. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, I am, um, I'm right-handed, but I cut with my left hand. I've always cut with my left hand, but since I'm dominant right hand, I think, um, I feel like with uh, snips, they're easy because you're just pinching. So I don't know if I'm ambidextrous. I am, I think, just because I do so much embroidery and so much cutting and I'm so lazy and I don't want to take my um, poop off my machine, I've kind of taught myself to just like use kind of like, you know, like yeah. I'm a little crab or something. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I think it, it saves me time. I cut really fast. I think people say they have trouble keeping up with my cutting. But yeah, at this point, I forget if I'm left-handed or right-handed for cutting. My mom said that um, in school, uh, they called her when I was in kindergarten because they was they were worried. It was back in the day where people used to force you sometimes to use your right hand instead of your left hand. Mm -hmm. And um, I think my mom was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why. I just, 
I am a left-handed. Maybe that's my brain too. Okay, we're going to cut, trim away on the top. How are we doing? Does anyone have any questions? Am I losing anyone? Hopefully, hopefully not. I'll try and cut slower. There we go. Next piece. And I'm just looking at my stack because I stacked them in order. It's going to be your roof. I really want there to be a lot of blue. Oh, but that's so cute, isn't it? Okay, so if you have fabric that's directional or you pay attention to that, or if you have fabric that you kind of want to fussy cut, I'm going to move it over here because I want a little of that blue showing. Okay, quarter inch seam allowance, and then we're going to spray and fold. How are you ladies feeling with that spray? Good, bad. Miss Audrey gave me a thumbs up. That might be her superpower too. Did you see me I, though? I, I had spray some bad everything. Spray. Jamie, you spray I spray everything? everything. Yes. Don't you love it? Yes, I do. And so what we sell here at the store is going to be the KK Ganold. And I feel like it's so much better than that 5,000 or the Selkie, or I know there's other brands. Okay. This is like a new can. So wait, I'm going to give it a spray in my spray bottle. There we go. There we go. So if I you're only spray when uh, I'm basting a quilt together, I don't I like to spray my embroidery stuff. You, and, and I totally get that. If you are heavy handed and you feel like you can't, and, and you know, the older we get, our hands don't work as well. Like my hands don't work as well as they used to. And I'm like, I'm 50, what I'll be, I'm 51. And I didn't know that started at 51. So um, if you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. Just, you can, uh, you can just finger fold. You could use a um, seam press where you, you know, the, with a little roller. And like this, extend that line. Just make sure it's going, that you're extending that line. Um, but do what's comfortable for you. And like I said, if you're getting spray all over everything, then it's not for you. It's not, you can take it and, um, you know what I, oh, you forgot oh, to put your yeah. I forgot to lay my piece down. You can, um, some people will, uh, like I saw somebody had, they had like a cut, like a cardboard cutout where they cut out a hole. And so they would lay that down and then just spray in the area. You could do something like that too. Let me go back. Focus, Jeannie, focus. Don't lead the ladies astray. Okay, center it. That's the other thing you have to remember. I had somebody that came in with a project where they were piecing the hoop. It was the piece tart from the, from our um, Kimberbell okay. event, then the pillow. And um, they weren't, they weren't centering their fabric to that placement stitch. And so they were, they had areas where it didn't, it, they didn't have enough coverage. You know that Gunnold is the sister company to Sulky. I did not know that. Yeah, they're, it's the same product. I, You know what, though? I've used whatever their spray is. It's not the same. Like, it does not have, because I've used that, like, little can with the, and maybe I'm, I, there's two different sprays that I've used. And every time I've used that one, I'm like, I don't get the stick. So I... Maybe you got a bad can. I've had multiple. I'd ha I've had more than one can. So oh, which, I, I which, haven't uh, noticed which, the difference. So which sulky product are you talking about? The KK two thousand. Oh, they have a KK two thousand. Yeah, sulky does. Yes. I don't even. I I can't remember which which was the one that I used, but I had multiple. There's been two other sprays that I've used that people have recommended or I've seen them um, at. I've had samples of them or things, and I just, I'm just a KK100 kind of girl. And I, yeah, I did I not know spray, they were the same company. The, if I spray, I have use the KK2000, but I, I put my fingers in, in the way of the, in the hoop. 
that's my downfall. When you say you put your fingers in the way of the hoop, what do you mean? I'm holding down the fabric instead oh. of spray and that's okay basting too. it. Whatever works. Yeah, if you want to hold it back, I just feel like my seams are so flat and just nice when I use my spray. Okay, last thing it's going to do is it's going to do the outline stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. We're going to do the outline stitch and we are done with this one. When you trim it down, I want you to go ahead and you are going to press these. Press them. Um, and then you're going to trim them. Don't trim them first. And that is done. We are done with the house. Let's go ahead and rehoop and we're going to do two trees. I'm going to take this over. Here we go. And we are going to be trimming on that. This is our trim line right here. So I'm just going to trim just a little bit. I'm not going to trim all the way. Just going to get a little of it out of the way. And let's go ahead and do the trees. Any questions, ladies? How are we doing? Everyone OK? Let me grab it here so I can see ya. All right. Okay, if you are stitching with me, which is Miss Audrey. Joyce, are you stitching? And Miss Ellie, just give me a thumbs up if you are ready to move on. I'm re hooping. All right, sounds like we're ready then. Okay, I'm gonna pop up my hoop. I'm just gonna scoot it up a little bit. And if you wanna cut the other ones off, just because it starts to get, get heavy, you can. I'll just go ahead. You want to leave one on there. And I'll just take these off and throw them in my little, my little bin. And I'm going to put the next one on. You have a little bit of no sew area on the very top. nice and flat and we're ready to go. Okay, let's talk about your pieces for the tree. So here are the trees. And like I said, you need four trees. Um, if you're doubling it like me, you're gonna need eight of them. There are 12 pieces. So there's four rows, three pieces per row. You're gonna have your bigger tree pieces and your smaller tree pieces. So it is going to go tree trunk, and then you're going to have side pieces. All of your side pieces are going to be the two by threes. And after you do this small piece, then we're working on the tree, the tree, I guess, the main part of the tree, the tree branches. So, so it's going to be three in this row, three in this row, then you're going to add another part right here. And then you're going to have these two parts. And then you're going to have this part. And then these two, and that is 11 and 12, okay? So if you want to lay them out like that, you can. If you want to go ahead and let's stack them so you, you're just grabbing as we go. Um, I'm always like kind of a systematic person. I like to kind of repeat. I like to assembly line. And this is the order in which we're going to be stitching. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab those. This is my one, two, and I'm going to just put them face down so that way I can grab them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this is gonna be, and you don't have to do that, but this is the order in which we're gonna be stitching them. Just gonna put it next to the machine. Um, and we're, I'm doing two trees. So I'm gonna load one here and one here. You can color group if you want. When I did my set, I color grouped. 
How many, um, what machine for the people that are stitching, Audrey, your Solaris Illuminaire, Joyce, your Solaris, uh, Roller, are you stitching with us? Because yours will color group. Ellie, are you on a machine that, if we can all color group, let's color group. Is there anyone that doesn't have color grouping on here? And if you're not, if you can't color group, don't worry about it because then you, you're just gonna do one at a time. But I think most people are watching. Miss Shelley, you color, are you stitching? Do you, can you color group? There's lots of machines to choose from. So let's go ahead yeah, and color group. I'm you, um, color grouping um, okay. and I'm stitching with you. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna color group. So I'm putting down one of those, two of these, one of these, two of these one of these and two of these, and we are ready. And let's go ahead and color group. So I have both of my stocks ready to go. To the machine. What size Side hoop are you in? What was that? What size hoop are you five in? Five by seven. Everything we're doing is five by seven. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to go to the home button that will clear my screen. And let me put my computer here. OK to cancel. Yes, it is. Let me go and grab my design. And I'm going to set it. I'm going to go ahead. And so if you are on Baby Locker Brother, if you go to edit, and you go to move, whoops, that's not what I wanted to show you. You go to move, you're just gonna have your move keys down here. But if you go edit and go rotate, you'll have your move keys and your rotate. So I'm just gonna be rotating and moving at the same time. Let's take our design, so we need to rotate it. I'm just gonna rotate it 90 degrees to the left. So the point is to the left. You don't have to do that, but it might be less confusing if you do what I'm doing. And I'm going to use my arrows and move it straight up. I have my five by seven work area picked and I'll just put it right there. I'm going to go, um, okay. This button right here is going to make a copy. So I don't have to go add, find the design, do all of that. I'm just going to hit this button. It makes a copy. I'm gonna go back to rotate. This center button here will center it for me. So now it's centered and now I'm gonna just scoot it down. And my advice is to scoot it all the way down. I kind of, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna move it an inch down. And that was a big mistake because I was struggling with my fabric overlapping. All right, I'm gonna say, okay, embroidery. And we're gonna color group. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to color group. You're good choice, Miss Ellie, you good? I don't know if Ellie can hear me. Can you hear me, Ellie? Where is my cursor? I am unable to move to my other screen. Okay, sorry if you're on my other page. I can only seem to see a couple of you right now. All right, to color group, you will either have an edit or a layout button. I'm gonna hit my layout button and it's this button right here. You can see in my progress bar, it has the template and all the applique, the template and all the applique, it's repeating. If I hit this button right here, now it's doing both templates, all the applique all at once. Yeah, did you like that, Joyce? Fun, right? All right, the only time it will not let you color group is if my designs were overlapping, it wouldn't let us, or if it ruined the integrity of the design. This machine is smarter than us and it will not let you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and it's gonna do my template. Just stop if you have any questions. My, my embroidery arm's loud. I wonder if we need to tighten something in there. Here's one stack of tree material. Here's the other. While it's stitching out my template, I'm gonna grab my tree trunks. I'm gonna give them a little shot of spray to the back. I 
I want to say it took me, um, I think it took me half an hour to do two trees. I'm trying to grab this red thread right here. There we go. So your job in between now and next week is going to be to um, complete all your embroidery, all your piece blocks, and piece your top together, which means you're going to have, and then layer it. So you're going to have the top. The only thing you're not doing is you're not putting on the binding and you're not doing the quilting because we're going to do that next week with the clear blue tiles. But this whole thing should be put together. So you should have your cornerstones, you should have your border put on, all of this should be put on. These are five inch squares. Those should be, I think those are five, or maybe they're four and a half inch squares. That This should all be sewn together and then have it layered. So have your top layered with your batting and your backing. Okay, grab your, why is this not, I didn't cut. Let me grab my snips. Lay down your tree trunk and center that to your fabric. My trunk's probably, I can feel him. He's right here, right in the middle. And lay this piece down too. First thing it's gonna do is it's gonna sew on the left side of the tree trunk or in our orientation, it's gonna sew on the bottom here. So go ahead and this is your trim line. So do your trimming. And then you're gonna place, you're gonna place one of your, um, for me, it's my, it's white. You're gonna place your white piece. How are you doing? Is this, are you, it's not too confusing, is it? I'm not even using my instructions. I like, doing traditional blocks and piecing in the hoop. It's fun. I love it too. And honestly, I thought this was going to be uh, just traditional piecing. And I don't want to say I was disappointed. I like, I like, you know, embroidery piecing too, but I was looking forward to doing the piecing just on my sewing machine. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll be able to do it on some other projects. So go ahead and trim this away. And then you're gonna lay down piece number two, which is gonna be covering over this side right here. So fabric goes right side down, center to that stitch line. Sometimes I can't tell with this fabric, I have to look at it twice. Now it's gonna sew your quarter inch seam allowance. You can finger press it and fold it over or give it a little shot of spray and fold it over. I'm gonna pull it back, give it a little. Okay, trim line. Now it's gonna go on the other side and we're gonna put our next two pieces of two by three. Where are all my gorgeous ladies? I can't see most of you. 
Okay, go ahead and trim. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. Go ahead and trim. I'm gonna lay down our fabric. There, that's my right side. Remember, now it's gonna go down over the green because we're gonna have to flip it back the other way. Okay, quarter inch seam allowance. Nula has the kitty. Getting big. Ah, uh, how old is how old is the cat now? The kitty. Almost a year. He'll be a oh, year at the end of April. That happened so fast. Yep. He's only he's only a little bit um younger than Momo then, because Momo's like I think a year and a half now. They get big so fast, don't they? Yes. All right. And you give it a little shot of spray. And flip it over. Or if you're holding it, just kind of stretch it back a little bit. Okay, now it's gonna sew right this way. I, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be calling it top, left. So either, depending on your orientation, it's gonna be the left right now, but it's gonna sew all the way down. And then we're gonna get ready to lay down our first, um, our first row of the green tree part. I can't get to my other screen. Okay, we're gonna trim to the left of the stitch we just did. Just extend that line straight. Are we talking isocord? I did it all. Don't worry about it. Well, I started the list because I just bought the last two colors of something. Um, maybe just send me just those, but I, I went through it all last night. Oh, so I don't okay. need a so list. Just the two colors that yes. You okay. Yes, please. You know what's on my list, Michelle? Everything that only had one or none. So if it was oh, one of those, okay. it's already on there. I just didn't want to bother you, but I didn't know. I figured you must be the cord. All right, let's lay down this piece. Do quarter inch seam. There we go. Now it's gonna sew, I think we're putting on this piece here. So it's gonna go this way on both of these.
So on my, um, on the, I did a video last night on that video. These pieces are so big. They fit in here. They fit it on these. Um, if you want to just use it for the next triangle, there's just so much extra. I lost my snakes. How could I have done that? Okay, here they are. Okay, extend that line. Slide it on. You're going to lay down your next white. Okay, quarter inch seam allowance. All right, I'm gonna slide it. All right, now it's gonna go the other way. I'm gonna fold this out of the way just so it doesn't get stitched down. Make sure that foot doesn't get caught. And we're gonna trim, we're gonna lay down two more white pieces. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is gonna be piece number six. We're gonna be laying down on the left-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. Okay, that was your trim. Now we're gonna place. Trim, place, quarter inch. Okay, here's your quarter inch seam allowance. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my camera right. Is it right here I need to tighten it? Okay, now it's gonna sew all the way across and then we're gonna lay down our next green piece.
And if you need to like move your fabric or anything um, and get it out of the way, don't be afraid to just hit the stop button. It'll move to where it's gonna go and then it's gonna stop before it starts stitching. So when I did my first two green trees and I'd put them too close, I was having to flip my fabric around and I just kept my finger on my start stop button, let it stitch one side, stopped it, made sure all my fabric was out of the way and started it again. Remember, you're the boss. Okay, we're gonna trim everything to the left of this and it's time to put down another green piece. And this, this stitch is over here, so you can't get it flat right there. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna be a completely flat line. Okay, lay down your next two greens, center it. And this will work. If you use this, because I did it on my, my tree. But I have all these cuts, so I'm just gonna use them all up. Last thing I need are these pieces all floating around my sewing room, making me crazy. Okay, there's your quarter inch. Then we're gonna fold it back. Okay, stitch right here. So this was um, piece seven. Then we're gonna do eight, nine. I do a combination, Cheryl, see? I like to spray it, but then I also like to hold it. Whatever I can do to make it nice and flat and perfect. Okay, now we're gonna trim above that line or to the right of that line. Extend that line all the way. So Terry, I cut with my right hand here cause it's just more convenient. Yes. I guess my, my left would have been fine too. Let's go left over here. <laughs> Show off. I know, right? <laughs> Does anyone else cut with both hands? I don't no. think I can. Because these are just, you just pinch them, right? Yeah. So it's not like you have to be really skilled with the snip. I've been well, doing. Well, you know. I've What'd you say, Joyce? Um, with the snippers after watching you do it, I can do it two rounds. Okay. Nice. I can watch you. We'll start, a, we'll start an ambidextrous um, revolution. Because don't you, because it saves time. Because sometimes you have to like swing your whole hoop around, but if you can just do it with your other hand. All right, quarter inch. I want, I want you to make that a goal, ladies. <laughs> 2022 is going to be the year of cutting with both hands. Let's do it. I don't know. It's awful hard to teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> try it. I want I've you to try it now. Just I've come never on. been able to use snips. Are you serious, Cheryl? These are like the best. What do you tell me what you find difficult about using the snips? I can't get close with the snips. They just don't. They don't seem to work right for me. You know, I, I like mean, my duck bills. You see, that's the thing. I can't use duck bill. I can't use duck bill because um I can't, and even though I cut with my uh, left hand, 
So I, I've told you this story before. We I ordered some true left-handed duckbill scissors from Fomori. I was so excited because I'm like, okay, because you can't, you've got to be a righty to use righty duckbill scissors. Um, so I've never been able to use them. When I got those, I could not cut with them. And I opened a pair and they didn't work. And so I opened up another pair and then I called for Maury and I was like, I think I got a defective batch of left-handed scissors. And he said to me, he goes, um, what I want you to do, I'll grab a pair of scissors. He goes, instead of holding your scissors like this, where you get your whole hand in it the whole way, he goes, I want you to just grab your scissors with your thumb and your middle finger and just open it up and snip. And they cut perfectly for me. And he goes, what's going on is you have trained your left hand to cut with right-handed scissors. So you have to retrain your le left hand to cut with left-handed scissors. I was like, that's too much work. I'm never going to do it. I never bought another pair of left-handed scissors again. I can't because I have to literally hold them just with my thumb and my middle finger and just like do that. And I don't have time for that. We're movers and shakers. I've got Kimberbell projects to do. Who's got time to hold my scissors and think about it every second. So, um, so that's why I've never been able to use duckbill. That's my, the whole point of my story, Cheryl, is I've never been able to use duckbill scissors. Because when you, um, I, you know, maybe I could try it with my right hand now that I've trained my right hand to cut too. I should give it another go. All right, now we're gonna put on the other piece. This is piece uh, seven, eight, nine. We're putting on piece nine. I can't tell which is my, I'm sure, so I'm sure I've put some of my pieces down wrong. If you can't tell, it shouldn't matter. I know, right? Miss Audrey, your Lumi came in today, so I'm going to be shipping you some stuff out. So let me know if you need anything else. I'm going to send out your Lumi, your April showers, and your mug rugs. And for some reason, I can't switch my screen over, so I can't even see your lovely face right now. Um, what was April showers? April showers is, um. oh, did you see you were a winner, Audrey? Oh, I did. Later, late. Did, that you, see, day. did you see Patrick try to ma ma not make you a winner? I know so, because I use that stuff all the time and I would so buy it. I'm yes. disappointed you aren't going to sell it. Are you talking about Tula Pink? Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, I just didn't have enough people that yeah. wanted it. Anyway, I think there's a, probably a couple more things that I want and I'll email okay. you tonight. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. I can't wait to see what I get. Well, you're going to get one of the tri stands. Oh, and then good. I'm going to, and you had already purchased the April showers. So I'm going to refund you. You get oh, it for okay. free. <gasps> oh, except for shipping. Don't <laughs> let them think I get free shipping. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just fold this out of the way so it doesn't. I think it would have been fine, but let's just fold it out of the way, anyways. <gasps> Oh my God, my daughter just texted me. We've been waiting for her ACT scores. And every day I've been asking her, did you get them? And she's so mad at me because she's like, you know, I'll tell you as soon as I hear. And she just texted me. So how old is your daughter? She's a junior. Oh yeah, ACTs are pretty, uh, that's that's the right time to well even younger you can start taking them because you can take them as often as you want. Yeah, I think she just took them once, and I think that's all she's gonna do. She did really well. Um, yeah, and my son, my my daughter just does really well on standardized tests, and my son doesn't do as well. And he said he's not going to tell us. He's like, don't even ask. <laughs> Oops, that's Violet. I'm gonna. Hey, Patrick. So, but I, I like, how am I not going to ask him? I'm his mother. I need to know these things. All right. Hey, what's up? Uh, call Violet. Hey, what's up, baby? 
Did you really? Did, you, did she tell you? Tell her congratulations. Oh my God, did you? So Patrick just goes, you know, Violet, because they're twins, they, their, um, their school ID number is one number apart. So let's say Violet's school ID number is 1337. Kai's is 1338. So Violet's always been able to, and she's such a stinker, has always been able to go in and look at his grades. <laughs> She's, I know that's horrible, right? I shouldn't be laughing about it. He knows too. He knows. So Patrick just goes, do you know how to get into Kai's scores? He just Because Kai's not going to tell us. I guess he should have some privacy, right? We should respect his privacy. Yeah. What would you do, others? But this college thing, that's pretty important. So I think you all should know. <laughs> I can't see who's talking. Who was that? That was Terry. This is oh, Terry. Terry. Okay. Yeah. I can't see. You know what? Some things happen with my um, computer, so I can only see one screen of people. I should know, Terry. Don't you think? I think so. All right. This is our last row, ladies. This is piece number 10 right here. And then we're going to do 11 and 12. And then it's going to do the outline. So I'm uh, four trees in now. I'm just going to have to do to do my uh, double my double table runner. I'm going to have to do four more after this. This is like one of those fun projects that you could um, put on a good show, put on some audible mm -hmm. and just, you know, just go through it. I know I need to know Terry. Now I'm super curious. I have an 18 year old grandson and he it's, he's just, uh, well, he just finally made a decision on which college, but he has such high uh, ACT scores that he could pretty much go anywhere. And I oh, think yay. I think he's decided to go to um, Rolla, Missouri, which is a uh, science and technical and all this. So he's uh, he's pretty brain smart, that boy. Oh, that's so exciting! It's so it's so exciting. This time of uh, as stressful as it is for them. Yes, it is. I'm, just, I'm, I'm so excited for them. He couldn't decide between between Missouri Tech or uh, Butler in Indianapolis. But yeah, I think his decision, he was worried because he was afraid he was going to make the wrong decision and he wouldn't like it. Yes. And mom said, you know, every one of those colleges you can transfer. So she said, so you do it a semester and it's not the one you want. You go on to the other one. Yeah. Violet would really love to go to one of the UCs. I think she loved, absolutely loved, well, she loved them all. She loved USC, UC Berkeley. Um, I don't even know if she wants to look East Coast. I, I have such, you know, I'm an East Coaster. So part of me wants her to look East Coast too, but why would she want to give up this great weather here? Why does she want to go to the rain and the yeah. cold? I think also one of the reasons Aiden didn't think about uh, he was trying to get away, maybe a little away from home, but he has two little doggies that he just loves at home. So he's now, if he goes to Raleigh, he'll only be like an hour and a half away and he'll be able to go see him. <laughs> Violet's going to miss Momo for sure. Kai will too. I, I, I'm hoping Kai will stay close to home. I, I guess I want both of them to stay close to home. I'm going to miss them. I lose both of my babies all at once. Yeah. My grandson got good scores, but they weren't perfect. So he was very disappointed. I know. It's you know, like but a lot of them. You don't have to have perfect scores to get into good schools. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the schools are going um, test uh, testing blind where you're not even submitting anymore. Right. And, and, you know, it, it's not really indicative of how good you'll do. I mean, it's yeah. just, all it really means is how well you've learned up to this point, but college is a whole different animal. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a, I wasn't, I wasn't a great tester. Um, so I did okay though. All right. And now here I am. 
in sewing and vacuums, the career of my dreams. <laughs> That's right. And happy. I know. I ended up right where I needed to end up. All right. Now we're going to do our quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to fold it over. We're going to do the outline and we are done. I'm going to go ahead and heat up my iron. All right, let's fold these back and we'll press and trim these. I didn't bring my rotary uh, mat with me. So I always use a rotary mat when I'm trimming. I use Best Press. Um, you just want something a little moist. I usually spray from the backside too. You know, part of that is because um, it's usually embroidered squares. But even when I'm piecing, I usually spray from the backside. I, honestly, I don't know what the rule is with that. Who's a, Audrey, when you press out your squares, what are you supposed to do when it's, um, when it's quilted, when it's pieced? Do you press from the front or do you press from the back? Um, anything to do with embroidery, I always start with the back. Yep. How about, how about like, so this, but, but if we were to piece this traditionally, what do you do? Well, I would uh, press the seam flat first. Yeah. And then fold it over and press it from the front. Okay. Watch those little pieces and make sure they don't get flipped. Did somebody else, was somebody else going to see something? So if we were doing this um, with the quilting designs and you were pre-quilting, you could combine your quilting designs, but we're gonna, clear blue tiles, we're gonna have so much fun with that. I guess I didn't have the best angle there for you. Okay, let's go ahead and press these out. Here are my, whoop, I don't know why that thread didn't cut. Maybe this time for service for this machine. Let me go ahead and take my thread out. What are you looking for, Patrick? Look at, here's my mound of scraps. All right, let's come on over here. My iron heating up. My best press. Here's one of my houses. I will write it on it now. It came in a bag, I guess, and I need it for the for the V wings on the yeah. on the spring float. And I did not pay for this, did I? That was you guys should be You marked it, you a, but I'll go. Yeah, just check. All right, ladies, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and press these out. We just got this new filming arm. It's a little stiff, we're working it in. Let me just do it like this. Okay. My iron is, oh, sorry. I wasn't even heating it up. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put them face down. And I'm gonna give them a shot of spray from the back. I love uh, Mr. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I think I interrupted somebody, but I was going to ask you, is that muslin a quite a bit cheaper than using the mesh or is it just because of the texture? I think it's going to be cheaper too. So, um, I mean, and, and for me, it's not, it's not the price. For me, it's just the texture and how soft it is and how soft my projects are afterwards, as opposed to the no-show mesh. Um, so even if it costs more, I would use the muslin. And so I went to a training with uh, Nikki Brazel and she had done the neighborhood quilt, the Anita good one. And mm -hmm. I can't remember how it came up, but she told me that she used muslin. I was like, what muslin should I get? And she goes, I don't know. She goes, just buy the cheapest stuff. 
You don't need anything nice. Um, And so, I mean, I just went to Joanne's at the time. We didn't carry any fabric here at the store. And I just, I just bought whatever was cheapest. It was like maybe like $3 a yard. It was small though. That piece was only, I want to say it was like 20 inches wide or it was 36 or 35 inches wide. Um, So, and what I carry at the store, like I said, we have the, I want to say the 60, we have 45 inch, that's $5.99, the 60 inch, which is $7.99, and then the 90 inch, which I think is either $8.99 or $9.99. And then when you take a class, you get 20% off. So if there's anything you want to cut me to cut for you, just call me afterwards. Yes, Patrick. Um, Topper for spring showers that would like, I think Kinderbell recommends a heat away. Yeah, there's heat be gone OEST yeah, that we have. Gone. Yep. Okay, I usually will press it in one direction and then I'll go the other direction. And all you want is for these pieces to lay nice and flat. So this isn't directional, so I'm not really worried about it. And if you want to give this a little press from the front too, you can. It looks gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that so adorable? So press them all out and then we'll trim them down. I have a, yes. I have a, uh, oh, I think this got put in there from the other one, um, from the other side, because I had done those so close. Uh, what was I going to tell you? I don't remember. <laughs> but I usually do, I press in one direction, I go the other direction and I will pay attention to what kind of fabric I'm using if it's directional. Because the only thing you don't want, because your fabric will move a little bit. I'm not pressing, I'm ironing and I'm aggressive. So I like, <laughs> when I, I love paper piecing, if I have like a weekend of paper piecing, I'm like literally injured. <laughs> I enjoy paper piecing too. I love paper piecing. And if you want to press it from the front side too, you can. Oh, you know what I was going to say? I use, I have a four, a four and a half by four and a half ruler would be perfect for this because that's how big I think your squares are. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot to bring mine. Do you have a creative bridge one that I really, really love? And if I am trimming down my blocks and I don't have a rotary mount, I like to use a small, I have like several. I have the Ulfa, which I love, the 17 by 17. I think I have the 12 by 12. My favorite, I've got to tell you, is my, um, is it Martelli is my absolute favorite. So let's go ahead and trim these down. I'm going to just use a small mat, like I said, because I forgot my four and a half by four and a half, and I do want to turn it a little bit. I think I should buy stock in Martelli. I have so much Martelli products. Do you really? Like what other Martelli products do you have? I, well, I started out with the rotary cutter years and years and years ago. And I have two of their tables that go up and down and adjust and everything. And, and you name it, I've got Martelli templates, everything. <laughs> I think I think I need that table that goes up and down. I've been thinking about that. Okay, it is awesome. So this is um, I, I'm pretty sure it's four and a half by four and a half is your measurement. But the instructions are going to tell you to cut right on those lines. Please do not do that because I mean, if you look at this right now, mine is a little bit shy of that four and a half. So then my everything wouldn't be square and lining up if I were to cut right on that line. So just go ahead and lay down your ruler and kind of look at the stitch, the outline stitch underneath. I know it's hard for you to see, but I'm going to stick with that. And if I had my rotating mat, I could kind of turn it. Um, I didn't bring it today. So I'm going to grab, sorry, ladies. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to, <laughs> this is not ideal, but I'm going to grab this and I'll kind of move this. I like to move the entire mat. I'm going to put it like this so I can do two cuts, cut here, cut here, and then I might reposition.
Do you like my new spinning mat? Isn't it nice? <laughs> Necessity <laughs> is the invention. Yes. <laughs> okay, than... I'm going to lay this down and then I'll do my other two cuts. And that looks good. And I'll just cut here and here. But cut to your ruler. Cut to your ruler. Get it as close to the line as possible, but use your lines here. If I had cut to my lines, look at how not square it would be, and it would be so much smaller. All right, you're going to trim the houses down to two and a half by four and a half. So again, you do not need, oh, you know what? Um, you have pop rulers. So pop rulers will be perfect for trimming the, these, these down. There's no pop ruler that's two and a half by four and a half, but you can use your pop ruler to cut these down. There is a four and a half by four and a half. All right, I'm gonna do two cuts and then I'll swing my fabric. And there are your trees. They're going to be absolutely, oh, how cute is that? Isn't that just so sweet? I'll go ahead and cut these down. And ladies, that is going to be it for our so long today. I'm just going to finish trimming these. Um, any questions? Are you good? Anything? Just so a I quick will question. Yeah. The house, did you trim it four and a half by four and a half? Yep, four and a half okay. by four and a half. Okay. And trees, two and a half by four and a half. Okay. Got it. Okay. So you know what your homework is then, right? You are going to, depending on how big you're going to make your, uh, your table runner, I'll probably pre-quilt half of mine and record it if you're not going to be able to make it. Um, but this is what you need for next class. This should be all pieced all layered and ready to go. And then we'll be using the clear blue tiles to do the quilting. I've been told Joanne Patterson uh, called me or she sent me a message to let me know that the blue markers that came in your clear blue tile kit, some people have been complaining about them, that, they that it doesn't come out of the fabric. So keep that in mind and maybe have a, um, like a mark be gone or a friction pen or something else. You could use chalk, um, but have something else. Uh, the last thing I want is for you to be doing your clear blue tile and have that, have it get marked up and then it doesn't wash out of your fabric. All right, Amy. I, yes. I also have used the Kimberbell tape and put the mark on it instead of on the fabric. Oh yeah, ladies, that's a great idea. Yeah. So um, yeah, so if we're gonna quilt this, you could take a piece, that's such a great idea, I love that. Um, you could just pick, take a piece of tape and put it on here and then we can mark that and then you can just rip the tape off later once we uh, get the design loaded and then it's, it's the needle drop is ready, you can just go ahead and tear off that tape. So that's a good, so um, have some Kimberbell tape uh, or whatever you wanna use, whatever kind of tape. And uh, any other suggestions, ladies, or anything else you've heard that I haven't heard? All right, then. Well, thanks for joining me. I think everyone should have an invitation for next week already. And if you don't, just reach out, let me know, and I'll send it to you. Um, I will load this video, and I'll send you a copy of it. Um, but, you know, it was pretty easy, pretty fun. Look how perfect these are. They're so cute. I can't wait to get, to get, a, to get together next week. And enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, ladies. Thanks, Jeannie. Jeannie. That was great. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Fun. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.